Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray and welcome to my monthly wrap up it's one of my favorite types of videos to film on my channel alongside my monthly TBRs which stay tuned for that that usually comes right after my monthly wrap ups I cannot believe that it is already the end of July I feel like summer is just flying by if it could just slow down a little bit if we could just take a moment to enjoy the summer because I feel like it's going by really fast. You guys know I am on my summer reading kick. I have a ton of summer reads on my TBR list. So of course in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you all the books I read in the month of July. I love these types of videos because they're just really chill and laid back. We just talk about books and hang out a little bit. It's super fun and yeah. With all that being said, let's jump in to my July wrap up. So the first book I read in the month of July is such a popular hyped up book at the moment. It's Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I've also recently just found out that Christina Lauren isn't just one person. It's two people and I've heard that they're like two best friends who co-write books together. I haven't verified it yet. I haven't looked into it myself, but a lot of people have told me this. I think that is the coolest thing ever. First of all, this book cover. Guys, come on. This book cover is absolutely beautiful. It's so, so cute. I've seen other versions of this book cover that's like yellow or orange, I think. This one is... This is me, okay? If I was a book cover, we have the coffee, we have the books, we have the little cabin. So love in other words, this book I've seen literally everywhere recently, like all over book talk and Instagram and even YouTube. So I decided to give it a try this month. It is considered a summer read because the main story takes place in the summer at a cabin. So I thought it was a very perfect read for the month of July. It was on my summer TBR. What a great way to start off the month with this book. This was nothing short of beautiful. I was not surprised at all. I just knew after reading reading the first chapter of this that it was gonna be amazing. I immediately was hooked. I couldn't put it down. It is so cute and beautiful. It's a friends to lovers trope as well as like a second chance trope. And to be completely honest, I have never been like too big on the friends to lovers trope. I don't know why. It's just not my favorite trope. I've always been really into enemies to lovers, fake dating, stuff like that. I just always found the friends to lovers trope to be super boring and bland. I guess like typical because I feel like that's how a lot of people get into relationships is being friends and then going to being lovers so I was never really into it and then and then this book happened to me this tells the story of Macy and Elliot Macy and Elliot basically grow up next door to each other only in the summer times their cabins are right next door to each other they both quickly bond over the love of reading and books of course immediately that sucked me in we basically watch them grow up together and of course of course they fall in love it's a beautiful young love story something crazy happens it causes Macy to not talk to Elliot a whole decade. She does not contact him. She does not talk to him. Elliot is just kind of left there wondering what, what happened. Why were we perfect one moment and then the next Macy disappeared? That's what the whole book is basically about. It does go back and forth between two different timelines. It goes back and forth between Macy and Elliot as teenagers, falling in love, growing up together, as well as current time where Macy and Elliot are full grown adults. They are in their completely new lives. I guess like the whole story story is really about Macy trying to come to terms with her feelings for Elliot and what happened a decade ago. It was really good. I was really sucked in. I couldn't put this book down. I think it was just their writing style in this. It just kept me really, really sucked in. I also really love when books do alternating timelines. I love going back and forth between the past and present, especially with romances. I don't know why. I just think it's really cool to see two people in the past and then see how they've grown and changed in the present. It's just, I don't know. It's really cool to me. This was a five-star read for me. This was also my first read by Christina Lauren, and it was so good. I finished this in like literally two days. I couldn't put it down. I was so sucked in. It was a really beautiful and well-written read. Five-star read. I absolutely recommend if you haven't read this yet. It is so, so cute. I actually read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This book is another super hyped up book talk, Instagram, book two book. I've seen it literally everywhere and also the vibes guys are immaculate. Obviously look at this cover. We're getting some tropical summery vibe. I just knew this would be the perfect perfect summary. 
and I was right. I was so right. First, I'm gonna start off by saying this is an enemies to lovers romance trope. That is my favorite, favorite romance trope to read. So obviously I love this book and I was immediately obsessed with it. This book literally checked everything off my list when it comes to the enemies to lovers trope. It was, it was so freaking good. It was the perfect summary read. It literally takes place in Hawaii and I just feel like Hawaii is summer all the time. So this tells the story of Olive and Ethan. Olive's twin sister is getting married. Olive is her maid of honor, of course. Ethan is the brother and best man of the groom. Olive and Ethan, they don't, they don't like each other, okay? They don't get along. They cannot stand each other. Can't even be in the same room together. At the wedding reception, Amy has like this seafood buffet thing and it gets everybody, literally everybody sick, except Olive and Ethan because they didn't eat any of it. So everyone at the wedding got terribly, deathly ill. They could not do anything. So Amy and her husband couldn't even go on their extravagant Hawaiian honeymoon. And unfortunately, the tickets were unrefundable. So Amy had offered her trip to Olive to go out and enjoy. Olive takes it with open arms, thinking she's gonna have the best two weeks of her life in Hawaii. But unfortunately for Olive, shortly before she leaves for her Hawaiian dream vacation, she finds out that Ethan was also offered to go on the honeymoon by his brother, Amy's husband, and he happily accepted it as well. So we have two people who absolutely despise each other who now have to go and spend two weeks in this romantic getaway trip to Hawaii. We already know how this is gonna go. Because it was a honeymoon deluxe vacation package, it's non-refundable, Olive and Ethan have to pretend that they are newlyweds to get away with going on this extravagant trip to Hawaii. It's very interesting to say the least. You know, I feel like it's your typical enemies to lovers. They have to pull off this two week vacation, fake dating. We all know what happens after that, of course. I will say though, this had some really crazy plot twist in it. I thought the ending was absolutely wild. I did not see like half of this book even coming. And then there were just little things that kept coming out throughout the book. And I was just like, what is going on? I really liked this book because there were so many surprises in it. It had me happy, it had me angry and frustrated. I just really loved it. I feel like I can't even say like anything bad about this. This was the perfect summer read. It was so, so sweet. Enemies to lovers, guys. You cannot go wrong with enemies to lovers. This was absolutely a five-star read for me. I 100% recommend this. I would even say if you wanna read both these books, I would start with this one. This one's definitely my favorite, but this one changed my mind about friends to lovers and I actually really enjoy the trope now because of this book. So I feel like that says a lot about this book as well. But two amazing Christina Lauren reads was literally blown away with this. If any of you have read these books, make sure to comment down below if you like them, if you dislike them, if you wanna talk spoilers, make sure you put a little spoilers disclaimer so we don't ruin it for anyone else. These were just amazing. Next up we have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This book, guys, I love it so much and I'm not done with it. So I'm actually only about halfway through this book, but I wanted to kind of put it in here because I see a lot of people talk about this book as well as Hook, Line, and Sinker, which is like the second book in the series. This book is so good so far. I am literally obsessed with this. It's really getting me into this whole fisherman romance vibe. I don't know what's going on. So this tells the story of Piper and Brendan. Piper basically comes from like a super rich, famous family and you know she's a wild child she has all this money and she's just going out partying doing the craziest things so of course over time things keep getting crazier and crazier her dad finally cuts her off and sends her to Washington to kind of teach her a lesson make her grow up a little bit because she's never had to do anything for herself before and that is where she meets sea captain Brendan who is he is something, okay? I love their story so much. I don't know, like Brendan is just like this like overly protective guy, but like at the same time, he also doesn't know how to approach someone like Piper because they are such completely different people. Totally opposites attract, okay? Because they are totally different people, I think that's why they both kind of struggle to come together in this book. And it's totally an opposites attract type of trope, type of romance, and it is so, so, 
good. Like I said, I'm only like halfway through it. I haven't finished it yet, but I wanted to talk to you guys about it because I already know I'm like obsessed with this. I just wanted to put it out there. This is a really, really good book. I really like Tessa Bailey's writing style. I think she's such a good author. And also what a great summer read because it does take place in the summer. It's about a sea captain, like come on. <sighs> I read two books in the month of July. That's all I read. I only read two books in the month of July. Love and Other Words and On Honeymooners are the only books I read in the month of July. But I don't necessarily feel bad about it because my yearly goal is to read 50 books and I've already read 29 books. I'm actually one book ahead of schedule according to Goodreads, so I don't necessarily feel that bad. I had the craziest month. It's hard. Sometimes it gets really hard to just sit down and relax and read. I'm also preparing for back to school and I'm I'm so stressed. I'm also planning a wedding that is in October. Guys, <laughs> I'm literally getting married in like two months. Life has just been so crazy the past few months and this month was just one of the crazier ones. I am really happy though because the two books that I did read were, they were so good. I'm sorry I only gave you two books to take away from this video, but they were both such great reads. I'm hoping that if you haven't read these yet that I've convinced you to maybe try them out, add them to your TBR list. They were so, so beautiful. Both five-star reads for me. Also, it happened one summer. I'm currently reading this. So that's why I decided to share it with you because I know my wrap up was super short. Okay, I'm not, I'm not making it any better. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. Let's me know that you like these types of videos. You like my monthly wrap ups, you like my monthly TBRs, my reading vlogs, my book hauls, all that super fun book related content. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me because I post every single week guys and sometimes I post more than once a week. It's basically free entertainment every single week. You might as well subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.